guys, welcome back. Okay, so I went to locals yesterday. I got to update. Um, I was on the edge of playing or not because I was mainly gonna go just to record the games. But I was like, oh, what the heck? I just, I just couldn't have much, so I just had to play. So then um, I ended up playing Paleo. I had to quickly rush and get some extra cards because I was like, I had like, like I think like 20 minutes left. So I had to write the necklace, find cards, and then um, yeah, <laughs> so it's pretty hectic. It's, it, I hate doing that. I hate rushing into doing things. Like, I like being more prepared. But yeah, so there's uh, five rounds. I top eight, and uh, what I play? Okay, I played against. Uh, I play, what I play? Uh, playing against Spyro. Played against Cosmo. Played against. Um, I played a mirror match. Um, damn, what was the other ones? Damn, oh, I hate when is that. I should write this down, man. Seriously. <laughs> okay, so these are monsters. Okay, so pretty much, um, going second with this deck. Like normally, standard Paleo is just. Um, drop power into your, your, your traps and just pretty much um, have a bunch of disruptions and it's pretty it's pretty much a, a deck that's meant to play for itself but as of right now like that build works only if you're going first um, except the fact that evenly matches real so if you don't have a totally establishment that's kind of scary so you kind of have to like think about it going second um, in case you do go second, which means this is uh, this uh, like a kaiju allows you to set up because the sleeper is there. <laughs> the sleeper is stalking you, dude. So you can't really like just set that set because I just go like uh, M face pop two. Uh, they're 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 on their turn pop mode two. Like what do you do to that? You know what I mean? Like that's freaking crazy. So that, that's that's what this is for. And if you go first, that's what um the bear statue is for. You summon it. I, could, I was meant to play three, but I couldn't find a third one, so I just played two. But normally, like, uh, its purpose is well, if you don't open up Toad, the next best thing is this because they can't special summon. So the only the only way to get around it is by running it over with a super agent. Um, but you'll have back room for that to protect it, and then that'll stall you enough turns to just um, get to your um, Toad, which is really scary because like they're like on a clock, trying to prevent you from making a Toad. <laughs> and then Ogre's there as well as a hand trap. Um, it's pretty good. You hit um, double helix. You hit um, like sometimes you want to hit the the master the master uh, blah, 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 the resort, the spire resort because you don't want the protection um, it gives to their monsters, which is really really critical because you have a bunch of stuff at targets. So that's really bad. So it's something you want to argue that. Um, it's unfortunate if they have another one though because they always do. <laughs> oh my god! And then of course you play your paleo. Uh, and also another thing. Um, majority of you don't like play play this, but the way I thought about it was, uh, if you're going for second, um, this allows you to extend compared to if you just have like this. Where let's say you have open up swap and a frog, right? Pit special summon, and then you try to initiate your toad, and then they they sleep for your frogs away. Then you can just bring it back, and then you just, and still end up making your toad with just one card. It's pretty cool. That's pretty much what that is. And then um, same thing for this. These two are just insane right now. In this spiral, Kaiju Sleeper, board wipe the rest. That's so good. <laughs> and then of course, yeah, of course you have your Paleo. Uh, Paleo, 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 Paleo. And then Lost Wind. Lost Wind's good. Uh, I was debating on going back and forth, because normally I would prefer um, a Breakthrough skill, but the simple fact that like, Draco's not too much of an issue, so it's like, okay, so yeah, this is always going to be, gonna be live. And then, oh, I love this card. Oh, this card's so good. I'm bringing like, you totally do the play where you tribute the Toad, um, and then still bring back you totally a wall special summoning a dupe. That's so good. I like doing that. Then of course you play your uh, your solemns. And then I'm so glad I only played one because the one time I played it, the one time I drew it, I was like, I'm so glad I'm not gonna draw into another one. Cause this is like a more of a you can slow roll this and and like like hold off on it and then just mirror force it. Especially if you're playing against like rogue. Um, you can slow roll it against those uh, matchups, and it's just <laughs> it's an insane blowout. Oh, okay, I remember, I, okay. So um, uh, I I remember now because it was a uh, I played Spyro, uh, it was it was, it was Kalen, Spyro, Ali, Cosmo, um, Dominic, Paleo, um, Chris. You send you Kaiju. You send you. Oh my God, what was the last one? Damn, I thought I had the last one. I don't know how I can remember it. Can't remember the last one. Oh, I can't remember. But yeah, it was an insane. It was an insane day. <laughs> I get the Kalen. Oh my god! I turned up Baylor. Um, oh, hold on, my side deck. Hang on. Okay, so my side deck was uh, nice. That was smooth, right? <laughs> uh, three barrier. It's meant to be three wire tap. 
Um, to again, I was meant to be three crow. Uh, if you don't have ashes, the next best thing is this, I think. Besides Augur and well, Droll, because Droll is, those are too many cards, they're expensive right now. Um, but like, let's say, um, if you can't get Droll or um, Ogre, I'm um, Ogre, um, or Droll or freaking Ash, I think this is the next best duo because getting rid of the quick fix is huge. Like, that's pretty much how they generate everything. Bringing it back, bringing it back, bringing it back. You just crow the big red target, crow the quick fix effect, crow the drone effect. Like, it's just, if you get rid of all their quick fixes, that's insane. It's, com it's almost as significant as if getting rid of the heat double helix. Like, they can still make plays, but they can't do that insane play where they just generate all this advantage. So, I think a uh, crowing is just because the one thing good about it is not once per turn. So, if you open up three, you best believe that you can use all three. <laughs> oh my god. So yeah, it's, I, I really like that. Against uh, Spyro. And then again though, just summon it against the insane board and just try to set up. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, but yeah, I tried to, I tried to Vayler and Spyro against Kaelin. <laughs> like, I, I completely forgot what I'm reading. I was like, wait, nah. I, I completely, okay. I knew that you can't target. Like, I know. Like, I know you can't target them. And I was like, okay, that's fine. So I was like, I don't know what I was thinking. I was like, oh, I'll just bail her. Like, I was like, in my mind, I was, it seemed to work. But I was like, wait. And so I tried to bail one of his um, Spire Agent because he tried to pop my strike. And I was bail her. I was like, you can't. I was like, oh, I got a crap. I was like, that's completely useless. I mean, I, I mean, if you didn't have the field spell, it would work. I was like, okay, well, that's the, the piece of purpose of me playing it because it's always going to have a field spell. So, <laughs> so if you can, I'm kind of, if you can ogre away the field spell and bail her or whatever. Then you're in a clear, but I was crazy. Against Ali, it's freaking bad. It was a good game, man. It was, game, it was a win to game three. It was back and forth. And then he's freaking messed to um, get a freaking Cosmo Town. It just, oh, it was, it was just crazy. It was freaking like, oh, good, good game, Ali. And then against um, Dominic, oh my god, he was like really like all bit, bitter about me having his whole charge. Who plays so charge in a paleo deck? I was like, me. <laughs> and then, yeah, that was pretty crazy. That's pretty crazy. It was in time. And then I just managed to make enough damage. It was pretty crazy. Um, and then against Chris, it was just, oh yeah, it was a bit unfortunate. <laughs> like, he went, the card, the, it was like, oh, it was that. <laughs> That's sorry, Chris. Oh my god, what was the last one? I can't remember the last one. But anyways, but yeah, man, oh, it was so crazy. And, um, the extra deck is pretty basic, still so linear. It's like, it's not, nothing, nothing too, too, so different. It's just pretty much three of everything for him. Oh, well, not three of everything, but you know what I mean. Like it's, yeah, oh, this is, I had to borrow these, because I, I didn't have, I didn't have, um, the extra deck besides the toads and the open thing, yeah. that was pretty cool. And then I managed to get um, a freaking uh, the Shrudo yesterday, that was pretty cool. So I was thinking about it, I was like, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do with it? Because, like, like, like I said, I've been trying to find a way to make it work. Because, besides making it a level seven, because like, you can either make it um, so you can only target a level six lore, so it can either be a level wait, level six lore, right? Uh, you can target one level six lore monster you control by someone else. Yeah, so it can either be a level one, um, level, f level what the hell am I doing? Okay, so it can, can be level, level one. It can be pretty much anything, anything uh, between level, between uh, five, uh, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, yeah, it can be anything. But the the way I want to manipulate it is make it to level five. That's pretty much what I want to do to it. So if I can find a way to get level two on board and target it and special it. But there's so many cards already as it is, so I was like, oh, that was too much. But like I said, now, this is the one card block, which pretty much. Nuke, boom. To have, it's, an exp it's an expensive nuke, pretty much. An Armageddon Knight or this, it's an instant nuke. So I could, maybe I could utilize that to my advantage of going second, because that's pretty, that's pressure as it is initially. That's pretty crazy. But anyways, that's pretty much going to be, oh, and also another thing I want to point out as well, because um, evenly matched is huge right now against this deck. So there's gonna be times where you can try to, you can kind of play around it um, by just going into Opavinia and then keeping your 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 traps in hand. Um, so that way, if they evenly match you, they can't because like, you just have one card anyway. So like, if, if, of course you can go Toad and negate the evenly match, but that means like they like the chances of having another one, like majority of the time they're gonna put in three, <laughs> and especially if you lose to Denko as well. So I was like, oh damn, that's pretty, that sucks. So that means you can't activate him at all. So then, uh, being able to just have um, multiple disruptions compared to just Toad and getting one thing, 
So I don't know. That, I think that's probably the way to go about it. Because like you can't do it. Yeah. And it's not affected by monsters. So how, how can you run over it unless they make it to an exceed? But with along the way, you can just disrupt them. Does that make sense? But that's pretty much going to be it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. And thanks for watching.